This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. How good it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning and how good it is always to see each and every one of you worshiping with us. Those of you on Facebook, uh, if you are watching this morning, I guess if you're hearing me, you're watching. So uh, uh, go ahead and, and hit that like button and, and share uh, the video so others can worship as well. But we're glad that you're worshiping with us uh, this morning also. So uh, we have, let me just give a few announcements before we pray. Um, we have an administrative board meeting on Tuesday at uh, 6 o'clock right back here in the fellowship hall. So if you're on the administrative board, we'll see you here on Tuesday. And then on uh, Wednesday uh, at 6 o'clock, again in the fellowship hall, we have our second uh, book discussion on Adam, Adam Hamilton's The Walk. And so uh, uh, we... We uh, want you to come and join us uh, for that book discussion, so we look forward to that. And then uh, also uh, the uh, House of Mercy is getting ready for their gala, and, uh, and so uh, Angela Lockard has some uh, raffle tickets. If you want to support the gala uh, or the House of Mercy, we'll see Angela uh, after the service and, and uh, uh, pick up some of those uh, raffle tickets and, and support them and we'll give you some updates on uh, uh, when when the gala is getting a little bit closer and other ways that you could support that uh, uh, the, the house of mercy so same with you uh, on facebook live if you need some of those tickets just let me know or or let uh, angela lockard know or contact the house of mercy and and tell them you want to support all right with that uh, let's uh, bow for a word of prayer Amazing God, we thank you for today and we thank you for the opportunity to gather in this place that we might come this morning and, and worship you in heart, mind, body, and soul and have your spirit work and move within us that we might feel and, and receive and experience a fresh word from you through this worship service. We love you, O oh God. Pour your spirit out upon this place. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Our opening hymn this morning is found on page 303, or that will be on our screen, The Day of Resurrection. The day of resurrection, earth fell it out abroad, the Passover of gladness, the From death to life eternal, from earth to tomb, the skies, our Christ hath brought us over with hymns of victory. Our hearts be pure from evil, that we may see all right the Lord in raising. And listening to Texas may hear no common pain. His so called hail and hearing may raise the victor's train. Now let the heavens be joyful, let earth the song begin. Let the round world keep triumph, and all that lives therein. Let all things seen and unseen their notes in gladness play. For Christ the Lord hath risen, our joy that has no end. Amen. Amen. Good singing this morning. I want to invite you to turn to page 321, 321, or that will be on our screen as well. Those of you on Facebook this morning, you'll just uh, uh, bow with us and, and hear these words as, uh, as we pray. Would you join me this morning? Almighty God, 
you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. All right, as we uh, come to our time of prayer this morning, um, let me remind you that our prayer list is in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, printed there. I print that new each week. It goes out by email. So those of you watching this morning uh, or those of you gathered here, if you're not receiving the email with the prayer list, just let me know. Uh, also uh, email out a worship uh, outline uh, for uh, those who are uh, uh, worshiping online as well. So you'll need to get that uh, as, as well, so uh, that's available to you. But uh, the prayer list uh, comes out in those ways. It's the, the larger version of our prayer list is in the newsletter. And so if you're not receiving that, let me know and we'll make sure you get that too. But uh, we are people of prayer and we believe in prayer and we believe in the power of prayer. And uh, so uh, we, we, uh, we find that, that Jesus uh, uh, talked about prayer more than pretty much everything else except for maybe money he talked about money a lot uh, too but uh, so we're people of prayer and um, some of the ones that I want to point out uh, this morning is uh, uh, those that we still have a few on our list that have the COVID virus uh, uh, we have several that are still recuperating from uh, the effects of the COVID virus so we want to be in prayer for those uh, we're still praying for Jan's mother who is on uh, uh, hospice care and, and we so we lift her up and we lift uh, her uh, dad bill up as well uh, but then we just have uh, uh, several others on here we want to be praying for the the uh, house of mercy gala uh, is that uh, may 7th yes. okay may 7th so that will be coming up may 7th be praying for that that's a, that's a big fundraiser for the house of mercy here in town and as i mentioned earlier Angela has some raffle tickets. If you want to help support uh, that, please do. Um, we have our, our revival what, that we're calling a walk in the park with Jesus, which is coming up on May the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So we want to pray for that event. That will be in Tommy's Perkins Park. We will kick that off Sunday morning here, and then each evening we will be in Tommy's Perkins Park. So we want to be praying for that. Uh, the uh, Ministerial Alliance uh, revival that we were going to have in September has been postponed. Still pray for it, um, but it's, it's postponed. It won't be in September, but we still want to pray for where God leads us in that. So I, I know that you have your own prayer requests. There's cards back here for you to uh, uh, print those out. If you're worshiping online, send those to umcpastor at uh, brazosnet.com, and I will... Uh, put that on my personal prayer list and, and the church's prayer list if you want it on that one as well. All right, so as we uh, begin to get into an attitude of prayer this morning, we have some special music. Christ is risen, chosen, uh, celebrate the day of day. Christ is risen, hush in wonder, all creation is amazed. In the desert, all surrounding, sea is spreading, tree has grown, in leaves of grace abounding. Bring a taste of love unknown. Christ is risen, raise your spirits from the comfort of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do and dare. Drink the wine of resurrection, not a servant but a friend. Jesus is our strong companion. Joy and peace shall never end. 
Christ is risen, earth and heaven nevermore shall be the same. Break the bread of new creation where the world is still in pain. Tell its grim demonic chorus, Christ is risen, get you gone. God the first and last is with us, sing Hosanna, everyone. Amen. Let us pray. Amazing God, we thank you for today. And we thank you again for allowing us to come to this place. I thank you, Lord, for all those watching wherever they are, that your spirit would rest upon them and within them this morning as well. And all of us here, as we humble ourselves and bow before you, O oh God, we come, Lord, as, as a people who who need the power of prayer in our lives, especially in this day and time, that we might draw strength and comfort and peace and assurance of resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We come as the body of Christ, a, a people who have been recreated We died to our old self, O oh God, and we have been raised uh, with Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness that you shower upon us that makes us whole again. And as such, we bring with us our prayer list, as we always do, all these precious names that we have listed here, all these situations, all these circumstances. We lift up to you those lists that we have in our homes, tucked away in our devotional book or in our Bible or in our prayer journal. We lift up those that we carry around in our hearts, those that we, we just learned about this morning or maybe things that uh, is so tender that we just can't even put them to words right now. But we are a people of prayer and, and we believe in the power of prayer. And so we lift these up to you, O oh God. And we pray that you would allow these people to know without a shadow of a doubt that you walk with them wherever they are. Perhaps you carry them at times. Surely you have your loving arms wrapped around them at this very moment. And we pray, Lord, that they may feel the warmth of your love. That you might provide a peace that surpasses all understanding. An assurance that they are not alone that healing began to take place and a clear vision for their lives be revealed. Father, we praise you and we love you because we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in the here and now. And so we gather this morning as the church and we pray together this morning as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is found on page 420 or on our screen, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Breathe. 
bow with me this morning for our prayer for illumination. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts gathered here be acceptable in your sight, O God. You are our strength. You are our Redeemer. We realize, O God, that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word stands forever. Let it stand in this place, O God. May your spirit work within me as I preach and all of us as we hear without your spirit neither can happen in Christ's name we pray amen Amen. how good it is to be in the house of the Lord on this second Sunday of Easter amen Again, it is so good to see all of you. Those of you worshiping, I wish I could see you as well. I know you're there. Go ahead and hit the like button, share your video, make a comment of some kind, but we are glad that you are worshiping with us on this second Sunday of the Easter season, the great 50 days of Easter. We are going to take a look at John this morning. John chapter 20, so if you brought your Bibles, be looking that up. Uh, We'll be in the second half of the Easter story. We'll start with uh, verse 19 and go through verse 31. Our sermon title today is The Presence and the Peace of Christ. The Presence and the Peace of Christ. Now I know uh, you folks on Facebook can't see it, uh, but uh, we have the Paschal candle burning in our sanctuary this morning. It's also known as the Easter candle. So you can Google that and see a picture of one. There's many different kinds uh, of those. But it's, uh, it's also called the Christ candle. The term Paschal It comes from a Hebrew word which means deliverance or Passover, thus uh, connecting the resurrection story from the New Testament to the Exodus story from the Old Testament, and which relates the Paschal mystery of salvation in our midst, but also represents Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as the Paschal Lamb the Paschal Lamb. So that, like I said, this uh, candle will burn in our sanctuary uh, during our services for the next 50 days. The days of of Easter, representing uh, the eternal presence, eternal presence of the risen Christ, our risen Lord, will represent the light of Christ in the midst of of a, a world of darkness, A light that comes continually, reminding us of our salvation. It is the presence of Christ and it is the peace of Christ in our midst, in our very lives. Right here and right now that makes the difference in how we live life and how we experience life. 
as a people who are not are not eyewitnesses of the resurrection but who have come to believe in the resurrection through the presence and the peace of Christ. Amen? Amen. And we receive that by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals that, that presence of Christ, re reveals that peace of Christ uh, in us. So last week, on Easter Sunday, we ended uh, Mark's gospel in Mark 16, verse 7, with uh, the empty tomb and the angel telling Mary Magdalene to go and tell the disciples and Peter, if you remember, and you and me, that they would see Jesus just as he told them. So we're going we're gonna to have the follow-up story of that this morning in the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter of John, where Jesus comes bearing the scars and the proof of his presence as the risen Christ in their midst, in the midst of their fearful lives. And he comes and he breathes on them this peace that comes through the Holy Spirit. Now the, the key figure this morning is not Mary Magdalene. It's not Peter, as was last week. But it's Thomas. It's Thomas, one who is called the twin, the twin. So let's take a look at it. John chapter 20, beginning with verse 19. Hear the word of the Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later... His disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice back in verse 19 as we look at this text, as we kind to flesh this out this morning. It's dark again. Did you notice that? It's dark again. It says, it was evening on that day. On that day, on that day that their crucified Lord's body was missing from the tomb, that day when they were reminded that their teacher and their companion and their friend was no longer with them, that day it was dark again. Now, as I've pointed out several times uh, through Lent, 
when we talk about John's gospel from the very beginning of John's gospel, there is a contrast between light and darkness, emphasizing that, that ongoing battle between good and evil, between uh, sight and blindness, between uh, knowledge and ignorance, uh, between night and day, hope and hopelessness, peace and fear. Uh, we, could, we could go on. And we can say that about real life, too. We have good days, and we have bad days. We have times of happiness, and we have times of sadness. We have times of peace, and we have times of fear. Times when everything is going smooth, and when times when we wish we could just catch a break. Surely you've heard the expression, I can't win for losing. Well, our text begins with, it's dark again. It's dark again. The doors are locked. And the disciples are in fear on the inside. In fear that they might be next to be crucified. And then as John begins his gospel in chapter 1, verse 5, with the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it, Jesus comes and stands in the midst of them, offering them peace. In the midst of their crisis, Jesus shows up. Could you use some peace in your life this morning, church? What might that peace look like? You know, last week we talked about if you, if you could roll away a stone out of your life, what would that stone look like? Well, this week, what, is, what would peace look like in your life? Surely during this, this COVID crisis, we could use some peace as well as the other things that, that seem to be, be uh, uh, advanced because of the COVID virus. You know, just the normal things that we have to go through in our lives. Jesus came among the darkness and the sheltering in place and offers the disciples peace. What John describes is a, is a critical point in a person's life and in their faith where they have closed themselves in from the outside world, closed, them, closed themselves in uh, from their God. And they can't see any way out. You know, I read an article this past week. It was called a COVID burnout. And the symptoms are bodily discomfort, weariness, low-grade stress, depression, lack of focus, lack of energy, faulty memory, lack of enthusiasm and purpose. Uh, people are less engaged feel less successful, have lost inspiration and motivation. Some feel a sense of pervasive dread or chronic anxiety. Productivity and creativity are down. Weight is up. Lonely, isolated, and sad. Many have become pandemic zombies wandering aimlessly through their sheltered homes with a faraway look in their eyes. And I already feel bad just reading it. Surely the disciples feel this way, right? Surely the disciples, as they shelter in place on this evening of the resurrection, feel this way. But Jesus, who already conquered death, already conquered the grave, passed through locked doors in order to bring peace to their locked hearts and their sheltered minds. And after showing them the scars in his hands and in his side, verse 20 says that the disciples rejoiced. They rejoiced. That which was previously locked and bound and sealed and closed up and sheltered in place had been set free, released, opened up, restored. Now, that the disciples were accessible, the 
your hearts, minds, bodies, and souls open to the revelation that Jesus Christ had actually risen from the dead just as he said he would. And in verse 22, Jesus breathed on them the gift, the precious gift, the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. The verb to breathe occurs only here in the New Testament. And its usage clearly brings to mind the description of, of God breathing on that handful of dust in Genesis breathing life into that handful of dust, and we became living beings. It also has a, a representation of the breath in Ezekiel 37, one of my uh, favorite uh, pieces of Scripture, where God, uh, God's breath uh, entered the valley of dry bones. If you haven't read that story, my goodness, go read it. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 37. Because as that breath, God's breath, entered that valley of dry bones, the bones began to rattle. And bone connected to bone and sinew began to form and then flesh and then skin and then the breath came into them and they stood up and lived. That is the breath. That is the breath that Jesus breathes in to us, into the disciples. The imagery here is that of new life, new life. Jesus breathes his presence, God's presence, into the disciples in the form of the Holy Spirit. And that presence gives them peace, gives the disciples a peace that surpasses all understanding, Paul says in Philippians 4, 7. They're not who they used to be as Paul would say in 1 Corinthians 5.17. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a, a new creation. The old has passed away. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. Look at verse 23. It seems that uh, the key here is sin and forgiveness. We know that, that sin separates us from God and, and repentance joins us with God. Just as John 10.10 10 says, Jesus says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. In other words, Christ came that we might have that abundant life. He comes and he atones for our sin, the world's sin. And this is the message that Jesus empowered the disciples to deliver with divine authority to the rest of the world. Go out and tell the people, you have been forgiven. It's a done deal. Therefore, through Christ, we accept forgiveness and are forgiven. Or, denying Christ, we are rejecting something that has already been taken care of and our sins remain. As simple as that. We find in verse 24 that the disciple Thomas was not with the others. He missed the experience with the risen Christ. Tradition has labeled Thomas a doubter, doubting Thomas, based on his unbelief that Jesus actually showed up, appeared to the disciples while he was gone. And in verse 25, Thomas, Thomas wants proof. He wants to see the mark of the nails in his hands and, and touch them and the mark in his side and put his hand in the side. But I actually believe that Thomas is pretty strong uh, in his faith. Because I believe that those who are advanced in their faith do not rely on somebody else's testimony for their spiritual foundation. They seek it out for themselves, and that's what Thomas does. They seek out their own relationship uh, with Christ build their own foundation. Sure, sure, our, our witnessing is, it helps that along, but each of us have to build that uh, ourselves. I don't know where Thomas was on the night of the resurrection here, but I do know where he was not. He was not in the upper room with the other disciples, locked behind closed doors, trembling in fear. That's where he was not. 
He was not sheltering in place with the other disciples. That was not his nature. If we back up in, in chapter 11 of John, verse 16 tells us that Thomas was ready to go and die with Jesus when the others were not. In the 14th chapter, verse 5, Thomas questioned Jesus when he didn't understand Jesus and where Jesus was going. In 1945, the ancient writings of Thomas were discovered in a cave in Egypt. They consisted of 114 sayings of Jesus to which many dealt with faith. So we find in verse 26, a week later, Jesus returns to the disciple while Thomas is there. And Thomas sees and believes and makes his confession of faith. My Lord and my God. In verse 28. In his notes on the New Testament, John Wesley makes the point that Thomas is the very first, the very first to, to recognize and confess Jesus as God. To confess that Jesus is God. One key fact that I want to point out in this post-Easter text is that Jesus returned a second time. Jesus returned a second time just for Thomas, who was called the twin. Who was Thomas's twin? Perhaps it's you. Perhaps it's me. Jesus came back for one more person. For one more person that they might see and believe. Let me suggest that, that Jesus comes back continually. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That Jesus expressed in this upper room setting. Jesus continues to come in our very lives in the here and now if we will only see and believe. Jesus comes when we are, are huddled in fear, when we are sheltered in place. Jesus comes when we are low and down in the dumps because of a loss or any other reason. Jesus comes when we're consumed with sin Jesus comes when we are like Thomas and we just need some understanding. And Jesus, and when Jesus does come, He brings His presence in our midst and offers us peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. On this second Sunday of Easter, as the Paschal candle burns, as it shines bright, May you too experience the risen Christ through the many avenues offered by the Holy Spirit and that you may find presence and peace through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. And we thank you for Thomas, our key figure this morning, who helps us with our own questions and our own misunderstandings and our own doubts and our own fears and through him may we come to believe as we see in Christ's name we pray amen amen our closing hymn this morning is found on page 331 holy spirit come confirm us this is our invitational hymn. As always, the altar is open for you to uh, come and, and pray if you would like or pray from where you are sitting. Pray from uh, uh, Facebook there uh, where, and your home or wherever you are. Um, this is your moment. If you would like to uh, me to pray with you, just, just motion to me and I'll meet you at the rail and pray with you this morning. Uh, but this is your time. Would you stand as we sing? Holy Spirit, come confirm us in the truth that Christ makes known. We have faith and understanding through your helping gifts alone. Holy Spirit, come confirm us.
Facebook folks, if you haven't checked in with us, please do that before you log off. We would love to hear from you this morning. The rest of you, glad that you are here. Uh, Angela has raffle tickets for the House of Mercy. If you want to support that, please do. Um, God bless you all and have a good week. Would you receive the benediction? As people of God, go forth in peace, that peace that comes through the presence of Christ by way of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, Herb.